joining me on my program once again. I appreciate you wherever you are joining me from. I say good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Accept my greeting according to your time zone. If you have not subscribed to my channel, please kindly subscribe to my channel. Click the notification bell so that you'll be notified each time I upload a video. You can be among the first to receive it. Then go to the comment section at all time. Leave your comment, drop your contribution. If you have suggestions, make it out there. If you have any criticism, put it down on the comment section. It will make us to get better. Presenting you a better program. Thank you. Said that we face what Nigeria is facing today. And they said, no. The problem that made India to break into pieces and allows Pakistan to go is not up to what we are seeing in Nigeria today. The problem that set aside the former USSR and make them break into pieces is not up to what we are seeing in Biafra today. The, the problem that made Singapore to move away from Malaysia is not one quarter of what we are seeing in Biafra land today. It is not one quarter of what we are seeing in, 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 in Nigeria today. But why is it that when we, the people in that very contraption, come out to speak up about the issue situation. Nobody sees reason with us. Nobody pay attention. Nobody is paying attention. Nobody sees reason on what we are saying. So many people pretend as if they don't hear us. They pretend as if we are not talking. They pretend as if we are not speaking. But I bet you, every single word we are saying today, everything we are speaking is a reality. A fact that you cannot get in the conventional media facts that you cannot get in their conventional media they will never ever report about this chukwoko kebiyama have a reason why he placed the biafran people in that contraption and the more reason why biafran people are being hated by those by those who are keeping that that evil entity together why they hate biafran is because biafrans are vocal when we see something we must speak about it we don't keep silent can't be intimidated. Biafran people are people that are very vocal. When they see a word, they will speak up. That is why, right from amalgamation, the British never wanted to hand over Nigeria to the people from the southern part of Nigeria, more especially the Biafran people, even though it was the southerners who pursued the independence to get it. The southern part of Nigeria, the Odudu People and the Biafran people. We are the people who are at the forefront pursuing the coming of the independence of Nigeria. They pursued it. But when the independence was issued, it was handed over to different people. It was handed over to different people. Meanwhile, people who fought for it now become a ceremonial partners. Why? Because they are scared of what we are going to do. They know we cannot be silent. They know we cannot be bullied. They know we cannot. They, we cannot be used for a ride. They took the power and gave to the Fulanese. And Fulanese have learned very well from their master. That is why today they are chasing the Biafran people from pillar to pole. They have learned very well from master. That is why any place a Biafran says a word, it becomes a different thing altogether. Every other person can make a speech and get away with it. But as a Biafran, Every single statement you make, they will read meaning into it. Something that other tribes will say and go scot free. If a Biafran say it, it becomes a different thing altogether. Everybody, there will be an uproar as if he's not said before. Look at the London boy that will tell him not to contest the election. The London boy, since he contested in that election, which we know that he won, since he contested that election, he has been busy defending himself. Instead of him now concentrate on fighting for his mandate, or instead of those who stole his mandate to begin to defend themselves, he is now the person who is being attached to defend himself. In most cases, you find out he is busy defending himself, either explaining himself why he must be the president, explaining himself why he's contesting, explaining himself in any statement he made, even when he said the right thing, they wanted to explain himself more. How can you continue to live in such situation? This is a situation that has been created by the enemy. They created the situation to cage us. They always try to talk to us when they want to use us. When they want to use us to achieve their selfish aim, they pretend as if they love us. Just like when they 
we are calling you to come and participate in the election. Just to use you to legitimize the election, we are calling you to come and go and get your PVC. The message everywhere and the shout everywhere was, get your PVC, get your PVC. And we came online and we said, our spokesperson, the new prime minister of the African government in exile, Master Simon Epa, came out and said that we must not legitimize this evil. It is a trap. It is a scam. We must not let this matter. Everyone of us went online. We are shouting, don't get involved. Don't get involved. We must not legitimize this. But people did not understand. Some people, for one reason or the other, decided to say they want to give it a trial. Some of them are preaching and say, now they have an opportunity. Now they have the time when the whole people are supporting their brother. It is now that you have your brother. Everybody's in the back of your brother. Why would you support your brother? Why will you be a hindrance to your brother? We told you that that support you are seeing is not real. Every of that support you saw wasn't real. Go and check. Every one of them who were who pretended that was as if they were supporting Peter will be there. Every single one of them, all those elites, all those all those personalities, those one they call their their statesmen that were supporting Peter Bina. Go and check their statement of what they're saying now. Now that, that they have succeeded in using P2B to legitimize their election and drag their friend into it, go and check what they are saying on their platform. Instead of helping him to fight for the mandate or speaking on him, every one of them have changed mind. Some of them are now talking to him for reconciliation. Reconciling about what? You are reconciling without making the correction. Before you reconcile, you have to confess and make corrections. Before you reconcile, it has to be apologized. One person must apologize to the other. Before you reconcile, the truth must be told. But they have forgotten all that. All they are telling you is reconciliation, reconciliation, reconciliation. Every one of them that pretended in those days. Some of them have gone silent completely. They don't say anything. But initially, they were pretending to be on his side. And we told him that the game is to use you to legitimize the election. And today, look at what is happening. Every one of them have turned around 360 degrees. And May 29th, they are preparing to swear in who they want to swear in. And, and some of you are still hoping on the court. What court? You are hoping on the court as if this is to the first time you are hearing about court in Nigeria. Is it not the same court where somebody who didn't contest election was made a governor? What else do you want to say? Is it not the same court that said, let Mazen Nandi can go? Is it not the same court? The same court that three judges in the court unanimously say, the supreme leader of IPOB, Mazen Nandi Kano, is innocent. Set him free and let him go and pay him compensation. Possibly send him back wherever you took him from. That judgment was given in two courts. And today, was that court obeyed? Was that judgment obeyed? Are they not still holding Mazin Nandekano in solitary confinement? They are still holding Mazin Nandekano in solitary confinement. And when that thing was happening, some people felt it was okay. These politicians today who are going to court to get victory. These politicians, same politicians who are going today to go and look for justice, they were there when injustice was perpetrated against their own brother and they said nothing. They were there when the same injustice was perpetrated against their brother. They felt there was no need to talk about it because of the promise that was made to them. They pat them at the back. Don't talk about it. If you must contest and win the election, don't talk about it. If you must have any right, if, if you must have a win anything in, in, in Nigeria, don't talk about it. Don't talk about the illegal detention of Mazen Nandekan. Don't even mention Mazen Nandekan in any of your speech if you must win. And they gave that, pat him at the back and gave him that condition. And at the end of the day, what happened? He still came back in shame. Every time they played their, their game. And you see, the same man who created all this chaos you are seeing today, the late Muhammad Bukhari. Who started creating the chaos right from the civil war? He was part of it. He was part of the genocide in Biafra land. Let Muhammad Buhari was part of it. He came again and truncated a democratic elected government. Nothing happened to him. He was still there. And here he is. He came again. He came to finish what he started. And he has ended up in ending the Nigeria you're talking about. I was imagine that going to say he's going to be the last president. And that's what is going to happen. That late Muhammad Buhari will be the last president, and he is. They are still using his name to run. And all of a sudden, now that he wants to escape, escape, he's coming to give you apology. 
to party you at the back as usual, that he's apologizing to the indigenous people of the contraption called Nigeria. And some of them are listening to him. You are apologizing without making correction. You are apologizing without making confession. If you want to apologize, just as our prime minister said, if you want to apologize, first of all, you start obeying the law. Obey the law by releasing our Supreme Amazon Nandekano, number one. Immediate and unconditional release of Mazen and they can first start from there. Then the Biafran people will give you their rights. The right to establish ports anywhere in Biafran land. The right to have international airport in Biafran land. And then the right for a referendum. The right for a referendum. Let the indigenous people, indigenous tribe decide where they want to be. Why are you scared? Why are you scared? Don't you see that even as we are asking for Biafra, there are still some Biafrans who say they don't want to be part of it. Are you not seeing them? Why are you scared? Why don't you give it a trial? Why don't you give it a trial? You might win. And at the end of the day, if the Biafran people by their own self willingly say, we want to be part of the contraption, who are we? Why should I be coming online to trouble myself and be talking on a daily basis? Why should I be wasting my time to come online and begin to talk? There's no need for that. Why don't you listen to the voice of reason? These are the major things you will do. Not coming and which one are you going to apologize? You apologize. Are you going to apologize for the genocide in the civil war? Are you going to apologize for truncating the democratically elected government? Are you going to apologize for the division you have created at this time? Are you going to apologize for the lives that you have, that you have, that people have that lost your life, their life because of you? Are you? Which one are you going to apologize for? And because some, some people are still ignorant, because anything goes in Nigeria, that is why somebody like Little Muhammad Buhari will wake up from his sleep and begin to say. He's talking to people. He's apologizing. He will see how have the boldness to open his mouth and speak in the public. Where are you going to start your apology from? In case you don't know, our new prime minister of Biafra Republic government in exile, Master Simon Epa, have just given you a lecture on what you're supposed to do if you're serious. If you want people to take you serious, first of all, start from obeying the law. You are holding a prisoner of conscience, a man that, that your own court, with your own judges, three judges unanimously say, let him go, he's innocent. Pay him compensation. Send him back to wherever you got him from. Start from there. Apologize. Then open up the equality. Let every indigenous tribe get their equality. Have your seaport, if you have access to the sea, have your seaport. If you have access to the air, have your airport. Remove all the useless things you put in your in your constitution that you that you restricted the state from performing. Remove all those restrictions. Remove the restrictions. And again, conduct a referendum. Let the people decide their fate. This is the right thing to do. That is the right way to start apologizing. Not until you do that. You are just scamming yourself, not us, because we know you from the onset. And in my speech I'm making today, we are just making the case for those of us who are shallow-minded, who can be easily deceived. But I tell you, for those of us who are the hardcore followers of Mazen Nandekan, hardcore students of Mazen Nandekan, Members of autopilot, there is no amount of deception that you can bring today to woo us into believing your lies. Our Supreme Leader Mazen Nandekano made that statement before now that we have crossed the Rubicon. And it is very clear that we have crossed the Rubicon. Very recently, somebody has made that same statement in their conventional media. And he told them that Mazen Samuel has built a more solid ground. Master Simon Eka has made his struggle much more legitimate, and there is no going back. 
You know, when we say it's around time, they don't believe until the confession begins to come from their own media. Today, their own media is confessing. When you hear about the Biafra Republic government in exile, it is not a joke. But as usual, you know, they will always take us to a joke. As usual, they never take us serious. They always take us to a joke. Maybe because we have joked with them for too long. Maybe because we have joked for them too long. Today, we are in an era where what we say is what we do. What you see is what you get. Our, our Supreme Damazan Nandekano today has gotten the 100 men he has been looking for. The ally, the Muslim that I'm looking for, he has gotten it. And in the era that we are now, in this new dimension, in this new dimension, hmm, the earlier you learn your lesson, conduct a referendum and let the Afran go, the better for you. If you don't, if you don't, you will regret every day of your life. The best thing for you to do now is to let the different people go conduct a referendum let the masses decide if at the end of the day they vote and say they want to remain in the contraption called nigeria so be it who are we who are we do you think we enjoy spending every blessed day coming online to shout on top of our voices so many of us have left our jobs so many of us put our life on the line put our jobs on the line do you think we enjoy the hatred that is flying up and down? Do you think we enjoy the argument that we is having up and down? So many of us have lost friends. We have lost, lost relatives. We have lost allies. So many of us cannot look eye to eye with certain people because of certain issues. All this is created because of your evil agenda. But I tell you, we can never stop doing what we are doing. It doesn't matter what you think within your own self. It doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter the propaganda you blame. It doesn't matter your blackmail. Whichever angle you're coming from, we have we have crossed the Rubicon, just as much as Nandi can say. And that is why so I tell people, if if at as I said, at 2016. If as 2016, 2017, Mazen Nan Nekano was saying that we crossed the Rubicon. In 2023, what are you expecting? In 2023, do you think we are joking? Do you think we are still ready for your for your bullshit? There is no compromise. We can never stop asking for what is ours. Whatever request we are making today is what we deserve we are not asking for anybody's land we are not asking for anybody's life we are not asking for anybody's resources all we are asking is that let every man live equal right for everybody let everyone in that country have rights to their life let people grow in their own space at their own speed let people have that right to aspire for any position they want. That is what we're asking for. Let there be equal right and treatment for everybody. But we know that this is not the case in the British establishment. In the British establishment, it's not the case. We have several laws operating in one country. In a circular country, a secular country that has a constitution and a law, but in that same country, you have different laws operating on different levels. Some people are treated as sacred cows. In that second country, some part are practicing Sharia, some are not. And even those who don't know what Sharia is all about will be jailed and sentenced and attacked because of the Sharia law. How do you blame them when you made them believe that they are in a secular state? You made them to believe that in secular states, if they had known that they are in a Sharia country, they will obey the laws. I tell you, there are so many Christians, there are so many Biafras living in a Muslim world today, and they are living happily well, obeying all the laws. 
they do their business, they live there, and they live happily without complaint. Because they know that they are in the Islamic nation and they will respect their laws. But how can you come and tell somebody, convince somebody, and deceive somebody that he or she is living in a secular country and the person will live his life freely as somebody who lives in a secular country and do whatever he does? Because you told us that you can practice any religion, do whatever you feel you want to practice, whatever you practice, the way you want to practice it. But yet, in that same country, people will smoke your life out that you have committed one crime against their religion or the other. You see why it is necessary that we draw a line. When we are talking about disintegration, it is just draw a line. Draw a line. Let those who want to be in the caliphate have their own country. Name it anything. Practice whatever you want to practice in your caliphate. Let those who want to be in a circular nation have their country, have their borders. Practice what they want to practice there. It doesn't mean that they cannot both uh, 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 be friends. Both of them can still live by side by side. They can still do business together. They can interact together. They can equally intermarry if they so desire. They can do so many things together. But it will be very clear. The line will be drawn. You will know your limitations. You will know your boundaries. You will know that, that when you are crossing from this place to this place, I am entering into Sharia zone and not ever. You will know that when you want to go into the Sharia zone, you will apply for a visa and they will tell you you will see it written in your visa, do and don't. So that when you go there and you commit any crime, even your job, God cannot save you because you saw it before you enter. But in, in all this thing, every one of them can still come together, do business together, interact together, associate together, if they so desire. If you can still, at the end of the day, decide to merge yourself together, under an agreement, under an agreement, and still operate effectively. But not just to drag people by force, take people by force, and push them as if we are still in slave camp. This is why we are saying we do not want to be part of this very thing anymore. When we say it, some people think it's out of hatred. It is.